church. Give God your highest praise. Come on. Yes, amen, amen. Hey, you can go ahead and grab your seats. Welcome to service tonight. I'm Pastor Tom, and I'm the online campus pastor here at the chapel. I just want to thank you for spending some of your weekend with us. We're so glad that you're here. I do want to take a moment to highlight some really incredible stuff that took place during Serve Day today. We had teams doing projects all over Pasco and Pinellas County. And although there's a lot of needs that we met and we made a big difference throughout the community, there's one particular area uh, that I want to pay attention to that I want to highlight tonight. Uh, we were actually able to serve very specifically and strategically some families and some single parents. Uh, some of the, yeah, absolutely. Some of the, some of the things that we did were we, were, we were able to serve single mothers in the chapel. We actually sent out an email and said, hey, single moms, we'll watch your kids for a little while uh, and you just go have some me time. They didn't even stop the cars when they were dropping the kids off. They were, take the kids. And, and even cooler, we were actually able to gift them with an oil change as well. Uh, we were able to partner with a local nonprofit agency collecting uh, some much needed supplies like diapers and baby food for single moms in Pasco. And we actually went out to a single father's house and, and we helped out. Yeah, okay, yeah, awesome. Single dads, rock. And we were... We were able to help with some much needed lawn work and some landscaping. Uh, and another cool thing that we did, uh, we were able to partner with a uh, local pregnancy center in Tarpon Springs called A Woman's Place and we were able to provide for them some much needed repairs. Chapel, those are just a few of the ways that you are making a difference in the community. It's so incredible. So. So we have a saying here at the chapel that where there's a life-giving church in the community, the neighborhood should look different. And it does because of your continued generosity, both in your time and your resources. So let me say thank you so much for being a generous church. If you've already given online, we say thank you. And, and if you're giving this evening during the service, you can do that online through our website, or you can give in the giving boxes located as you exit the worship center doors. Thank you again for making a difference in so many people's lives, families and single parents this weekend. Hey, let's go ahead and stand to our feet right now. We're gonna continue to worship together. Whatever happened in your week leading up to this point, whatever frustration, whatever worry, whatever uh, fear, let's focus on praising the name that is worthy of worship tonight. Let's worship together. Yeah. 
to see you guys. You're going to be seated for 10 minutes. That's it. I was telling somebody outside the foyer, I said, it was so nice out. I almost didn't show up. It's so great. The weather's fantastic. I hope you get to spend a little bit of this weekend with people you love, enjoying the weather, enjoying this wonderful state of Florida. Can I get an amen right now? Now let's say, now let's see if you're a true Floridian, if you say that in August. And we'll see. Hey, listen, there's something I want to make sure you're aware of. Next Saturday is our beach baptism at Fred Howard Park. We are going to take over. Listen, if you have not had been water baptized, it's the next step in your faith is following the example of Jesus by being water baptized. I want you to show up at Fred Howard Park. You can look at the website for the time. And we're going to, we have everything that you need. Change of clothes, blow dryers, towels, a packed lunch. That's not true. The last one's not true. We just want you to enjoy, we just want to take your next step of faith. You know, water baptism, when they talk about it, it's an outward expression of something that's happening on the inside. And day by day, when we say yes to Christ, he transforms us. Sometimes we take big steps, sometimes we look, take little steps. But as long as we're te- taking steps towards who cre- he created us to be, that's what matters. Amen? All right, so listen, here's the idea. So last week in Mother's Day, we talked about this subject because we've been in this series, It Runs in My Family. And if many of you don't know what this is, this is a filing cabinet. That's what this is. And in most doctor's office, they will keep a paper record, believe it or not, a paper record of what your family history, your medical history is like. And at some point, you will be asked, Ask, does this run in your family? Does this run in your family? What about this? And we've been talking about this for the last several weeks, about what runs in our family. It runs in our family. And sometimes when we hear that, it's used as a negative. But what we have discovered together is that we can choose what runs in our family. And what we've been saying for the last couple of weeks is we've been defining the it. And we said that spirituality can run in our family. Joy can run in our family. Life-giving words out of the tree of life to one another can run in our family. 
Last week, we talked about a subject on Mother's Day about what another it was that can run in our family. And I want to continue because I really want to drive it home. Because there are some things in our family that, in our families that we want to keep. We want to keep. We do some great things in our families. And they're Christian and they're biblical and it's good. Then there are just some things that we need to toss because some of us have picked up some things from our families, from our grandparents, from our parents that ain't no good. Can I get an amen right there? We just got to toss them. That's okay. We don't need to talk bad about them. We just need to toss it. And then there are some things that we need to fix and we need to find. We need to find how to do it together in our families because we want goodness. We want, we can choose what runs in our family. I got several emails a couple of weeks ago when, we, when I talked about how we weren't victims in our family. And apparently it struck a nerve and it didn't make some people happy. So let me say it again and see how many more unpe unhappy people I can make. <laughs> we have to remember, because if you can't grab this, you won't understand the whole meaning of the series. That when we say yes to Christ, he makes all things new. When we say yes to Christ, day after day the scripture, time after time the scripture says that we are transformed into his likeness. He makes all things new. So although I may have some things that run in my family that I picked up that I don't like, I know that through my new relationship, my thriving relationship, my real relationship with Christ, he can make all things new. And that's why we're not victims in our families. And it's hard to really grasp that concept. And I get it and I understand but I can't help what the Bible says and what Jesus has come to do in our lives. Amen. So this week, I want to continue about fixing something in our individual lives so it runs in our family. And we talked about this last week about the word honor. And the more and more I talk to people in our church, in our community, you could feel, I could feel that people really wanted to bring back a sense of honor, a sense of honor for the older people, a sense of honor for parents or people who have served our country. I could really feel and sense that people, but they just didn't understand because culture is going in a way that regardless of what position you're in, that honor is connected to behavior. But we found last week, honor in biblical terms is connected to position. And so I want to really look this week at the word honor. Because it should run in our family. And we all know some of the reasons why honor doesn't. Because there are some people in positions that don't act very honorable. Amen. <laughs> and so we, we often operate from a position, if you act honorable, I will honor. If you act a certain way, then I will give a certain something. Unfortunately, that is not the way our relationship with Christ works. Because if it was for me to act a certain way before Jesus loved me, before Jesus died for me, before Jesus sacrificed for me, I'd still be waiting on the cross. So let's review uh, last week just real quick. The word honor comes from a, a Hebrew word in the Old Testament meaning kabod, to heavy, to be heavier, to have weight. To have weight of something, to be heavy. And so what you find immediately is honor adds a value or a worth or a heaviness. So to dishonor, what we said was to take lightly or to devalue something that is meant to be weighty. Something that I treat that should have weight and value, I treat light. Something that should be lifted up and something that should be, have my attention. Because in, in Hebrew, the word kabod, it means to heavy, a heaviness. There's this, there's this weight to it. 
So dishonor is just something that I take lightly. And what we said last week is if we treat the moms in our life or the mother figures in our life like every other woman in our life, we possibly, according to Scripture, could be dishonoring because that's just not any other woman. Can I get an amen? That's your mama. So when we take something and we treat it as lightly or frivolous, we dishonor. Because honor means to give weight to, to give a heaviness to. This week, what we find in the New Testament for honor is a word called atimos. And it means to dishonor or to treat as common or ordinary. So when we do that in the New Testament, what you find is something or someone that is treating something as though they were ordinary. It's just ordinary. Although they're not, we treat it for whatever reason. And we know, we already said it, part of the reason why we treat people like that is because we don't believe they're acting very honorable. We just believe they don't deserve it. And so what happens, what runs in our family, is sometimes we allow culture to dictate definitions of our behavior instead of what the Bible says about our behavior. So when you see the word... In the New Testament, atimos, it means to, to take lightly or to devalue, to treat as common or ordinary. And, and then the word in the New Testament for honor, honorable, or to honor someone is to maho. And it means to value, to highly esteem. To value and highly esteem, to treat pleasurably valuable. To treat pleasurably or valuable, to treat as though precious. So uh, uh, this week, um, I was in the Trinity area, and there was a motorcycle rider who, from what I could tell, was doing the right thing. It was red light, green light, you know, the whole thing slowed down. And there was uh, an elderly uh, woman driving, coming into the cross section. Our light turned green which means we go. Everybody with me? <laughs> but for some reason, this driver uh, just kind of lost track and kept going. Thank God they were going slow. And they hit the motorcycle driver. Uh, fell to the floor. I had an appointment, so I zipped around and I just kept going. So I was a, <laughs> just kidding. I'm, I don't send me an email. I'm just kidding. I couldn't believe it, but there was already a police officer at the other intersection. Wow. And he immediately sped over, got out in one fell suit, almost like Superman. Almost like Superman. Had like a vest on to stop traffic, went over to the rider, had already wi uh, radioed in for an ambulance. It was happening right over here on an ambulance. And I, I was like, what in the, is it? it happened so fast. I pulled my truck over, went over, and he immediately was like, sir, 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 just we need room. Come some people are already gathering. And what you could hear are two conversations. One conversation yelling at this woman, and I want to say it respectfully, probably was up in the mid-80s to 90s. Yelling at her as though she had a vendetta against motorcycle drivers. And then people who were put out because now traffic was backing up, slamming on their steering wheels, pounding on their dashboards. What a dishonorable moment for our culture. What a dishonorable moment for our culture. Already making evaluations about the driver based on their inconvenience, not based on truth. Already making evaluations. Didn't even stop. But so driven in what we have to do and where we got to go and our agenda that someone who possibly, thank God, they did not lose their life, no broken, it was miraculous, it was unbelievable. And I attest that to our first responders. Can I get an amen right there? Pretty, pretty amazing. 
I mean, the ambulance was there. I mean, it couldn't have been, couldn't have been six minutes. What, what is just a dishonorable, a moment that, that would cause, like, oh, what can I do to help? What can I do to, to relieve some tension? What can I do to... What a dishonorable, because a moment that should have had weight was treated like, ah, inconvenient. I can't believe sticking lady just... And it's happening in our culture more and more. And if we're not deliberate, dishonor will run in our family instead of understanding really what honor is. Therefore, it couldn't run in our family. So what you find in scripture is this word, tumeho. And it means to hold precious, to hold dear, to value, to esteem, to treat pleasurably, uh, valuable and, and precious. Biblical honor. There's this scripture, and you'll find it over and over, this mentality with the early pioneers of the early church in the Bible. You'll find it, in Tim, it written by, in Timothy. You'll, you'll, you'll find it in Paul. You'll find it in James. And there's this scripture that if we don't really understand, because if we don't really understand what honor is about from a biblical standpoint, it'll be defined by culture. It says this, submit. Raise your hand if you love that word submit. Go ahead. We all love it, don't we? <laughs> love that word. Just, it just gives me goosebumps, doesn't it? It's so good. But the problem is when this was written, there wasn't such the culture that we have now. Submit wasn't a word that we define now when we hear it because it was a different culture. Here you have Paul talking to the church at Ephesus. He says submit to meho, to give weight to, pleasurable. Submit to one another because they deserve it. Submit to one another because they're family. Submit to one another because they're good looking. Submit to one another because they have a lot of followers. Submit to one another because they sign your paycheck. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So immediately how I honor or to meho someone is connected to my relationship with God. It's not based on their behavior, it's based on my relationship with God. And I think we forget that because there are so many people who are in influential positions that abuse their influence because they're not living a life of Christ or for Christ. That we attach the principle of honor to behavior, but the Bible does not. Ooh, it got quiet in this Baptist church, didn't it? Says, yeah, I want us to understand this is tough. In other words, what you find is when we honor people or we honor someone or we honor a situation bringing weight to, importance to, it's based, really, when we honor others, I'm honoring God. Why? Because it's to meho to one another. Out of reverence for Christ. So it's based on Christ, not based on them. What you find is when I honor others, I'm honoring God. And what you find is, why? Because he created them. He loves them. And he died for them. And the minute we lose sight that the person who is annoying, inconveniencing us, making laws, I'm just going to say it because it's Saturday night. I'm going to get all up in your political business tonight. I just hope you're praying for President Biden as much as you prayed for President Bush, for, uh, Trump, right? <laughs> it's so quiet. Everybody's like, that's it. I'm out of this church. That's it. <laughs> Let me say it again, unless the online people, who basically are heathens anyway. So watch, listen. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm just having fun tonight. It's so nice out. We're, we're meant as Christians to, play, to pray for our authorities. We're meant as Christians to pray, pray for those who are in authority over us. We're not meant as Christians to play for Republicans or Democrats. Listen, listen. There are things 
in every, because I've been around a little while. I know it's hard to believe because I only look 26, but I'm telling you, I've been around on several administrations, and on every administration, I still pray for the president, and there is a third of the policies that are being done that I go, what in the world? I think there's a lost art in honor because what we have to remember first is that we are Christians before we subscribe to any tribe or political party. Because ultimately, what the scripture shows us is that what you do is connected to your relationship with God. Could it be? That's why when Jesus is asked the question, what is the most important commandments? He says there isn't one. They're connected. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second one is like the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. You can't love your neighbor as yourself until you know how lovable you were because he died for you. So what you find immediately is that my behavior horizontally is directly related to my behavior vertically with God. We make it about all this other stuff. It's not. Tomejo for those out of reverence for Christ. Because why is because when I honor Others, I'm honoring God because he created them, he loves them, he died for them, I don't like them, they annoy me, they do things that makes me mad, they do, yeah, but that don't change what we just, these three things. So not only do I honor out of my relationship with Christ, But we have to understand that honor starts with his view of them, not my view of them. Honor starts with his view of them, not my view of them. And I'm going to tell you, as an Italian from Brooklyn, this is hard. This is hard. This is tough. But it doesn't make it any less true. What you find over and over in scriptures, Paul writes in Romans 12, 10, he says, submit, honor everyone that you are in community with. Give them esteem, build them up, value them more than yourself, one translation says. Out of your relationship with God. Not because they deserve it. Honor is given. I think we mix it up in our families. I think we mix it up in our culture. Respect is earned. Honor is given. There are people that I honor, but I don't respect. Cricket. Cricket. (laughs) Cricket. And I can tell you now that my kids are starting families on on their own now. Don't expect your children or the people you lead, or your spouse, or your friends. Honor is a learned behavior. You're not not born with it. So perhaps we're not honored as parents later in life because we haven't modeled honoring others outside of our own home. So what you find in Scripture is it starts first in my relationship with Christ out of honor. It starts there. And I have to understand when I honor people, I, it is one of the ways I honor God. And when I honor people. See, this is, this is something, this is going to be a long night. Sit back, sit back, sit back. Listen, <laughs> this is what we forget because a lot of times, and I, and I struggle with this, and I just want to be completely transparent. We have a tendency to think of God like we think. We think God thinks like we think. God thinks nothing like we think. But we we tend because then it feels comfortable for us. Do you know that according to scripture, God simultaneously can see you in all of your depravity and filthiness of your life and at the same time see you washed in the blood of the cross? At the same time. Tell me who can do that in your family. 
We forget that's one of the things that makes him God. We're praying right now for our community and somewhere around the world, God is answering prayer at the same exact time. It's one of the things that makes him God. God can see you in all of your sin or things you do wrong, things you say wrong and all that and still simultaneously see you full of potential. So when I honor people, I, when I honor a situation, it's because it's one of the ways that I honor God. Because it starts with the view he has of them, not the view I have of them. So, very simply, three things I just want to give you. Because what we want to do is we want to fix and find. We want to fix what we believe honor is in our families, and we want to find new ways to do it. When we honor people, one of the things you do is you prioritize them. You prioritize them. When you prioritize something, it's of importance. When you prioritize, when you are in the the line at Rulu Coffee, because we don't go to Starbucks anymore. Can I get an amen? Amen. Just kidding. Stop. Stop. I went there the other day. These guys would be mad at me. Anyway, so and you both come up to the line at the same time, and you know that by you going, oh, no. You first. It's going to take forever because they don't know what they want. And they're going to stand in front of the menu. Oh, let me see. I don't really know. Meanwhile, you're dying, right? When you come up, you defer. When you come up to a door at the same time, you open it for someone. Especially... Well, ready? Especially someone older than you. That's what one, of the, one of the things that the Bible says to honor is honor the aged. The other thing that God, God says to honor is honor those who have sacrificed their life. Dear God, if you know they're a veteran, buy them coffee and open the door. So, it's not based on whether I agree with war or not. It's based on my relationship with God. I was out, this is uh, last year, and I happened to be at a, a pastor's breakfast, and you guys know I hate those things, but I mean, I, I went and there was a, a representative from our state, a state, a state representative, and they were Democratic. And they walked in the room, I stood. I stood. Because there is no authority on earth that has not been given by God. Read the Bible. And I had a couple of pastors going, what are you doing? I go, no, what are you doing? <laughs> so I don't get invited to a lot of things like that. <laughs> I'm like, no, don't, you're looking at me. No, what are you doing? Get up. Yes, ma'am, great to see you. Thank you for serving. No, what are you doing? Man, it's quiet. You prioritize them. You prioritize them. You make it go first. I'm going to show you a scripture that historically people use this about money. Honor the Lord with your wealth with the first fruits of all your crops. And we understand that giving, and we'll talk about this maybe some other time, but giving in the Christian's mind is that you give first to God because he can do more with 90% than you can do with 100%. It's called the tithe, and that is sacred to the church and to the people of God. That's it. That's the way that the Bible says. But if you just see it on the surface, this is a scripture about honor. One of the ways you honor is you prioritize We honor every weekend. You're honoring God by taking time out of a beautiful day to go, no, I need to go into the house of the Lord. They said to be, I was glad when they invited me in. I was made it a point to be at church. I made it a point to prioritize because what you value, you prioritize. And one of the ways that we show honor is when we prioritize. So we prioritize them. You open the door. 
If you're sitting somewhere on the tram at TPA or a bus or wherever you go and you're sitting, my gosh, get up and let someone else sit down. Not because they've earned it, not because they're good looking, not even, listen, not even because you may like or dislike, because it's the way we also honor God. Because they were still made in his image. He still died for them and he still loves them. Hard for me to wrap my head around how he can love some people. But I guess that's one of the ways he becomes God and I'm not. So we prioritize them. When you do something first, it connotates value. Priority is connected to honor. Second thing, you build them up because honor has a language. Honor has a language. I'm fascinated by people who talk smack, who just talk about one another that you thought they loved, but when that person isn't around, they talk kind of like, you know, "Ah, well, you know. You know Joey, you know Tom, you know Susan, you know Betty. She just, it's not honorable. Honor has a language because tomaho is to build up. When we honor people, one of the ways we honor, because we're going to fix it, is we prioritize them. We prioritize them. The second way is we build them up because honor has a language. We speak well of them. And if there used to be a saying, and I'm going to date myself, because I'm the old guy on staff now, you know? If you ain't got nothing nice to say, shut up. <laughs> Simple. If you ain't got nothing nice. <laughs> Listen, it happened this week. Somebody was talking about somebody in our community. And I mean, I was, and, it, <laughs> and I was, you know, it's a funny thing because uh, in leadership, they say your strength is your weakness. So, it, it was, I, you know, I speak for a living. If some of you don't know that, that's what I do here, all right? <laughs> so I speak, and they were talking, and I just, and I kind of almost jumped on the bandwagon. I almost jumped on the bag, and I was like, I just, and one of, one of my friends goes, why are you so quiet? And I went, I, I, I'm, I'm just hungry. See, what honor does is honor has a language, it builds up. And if there's nothing good you can find to talk about, then don't talk. But it's really, really difficult to do that. Listen, ready? In a culture that everybody posts and says what they think. However, the Proverbs say, in the abundance of words, there is sin. No pressure on my gig, right? Anyway, so... But it's build them up. Honor has a language. This is a fascinating scripture. Look at this. In the book of James, it says, with the tongue we praise our Lord and our Father. We come to Saturday night service and we worship like crazy. We listen to the hunky chunky Italian. (laughs) With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father and with it we curse men. And then look at the next line. Who have been made in God's, what? Right. Because you're treating them as though they weren't a child of God. You're talking smack about them like they're not a child of God. You're talking about them as though they're ordinary. You're talking about them and devaluing. Right, you, you, you come in, you say hello to people, you go anywhere, it doesn't matter. And then when they walk away, you're like, what an idiot. What a jerk. I don't know what they're doing here. They don't even go to this church. Right, and James says, hey, actually you can't, I don't, I don't, know, how, I don't, I don't know how you can do that. And look at the basis he uses. Who have been made in God's likeness. Oh, you have forgotten You're looking at the behavior. You're fixed on the behavior. 
It doesn't mean that you exonerate. It doesn't mean that it's not wrong. It doesn't mean that we're, we compromise what we believe in. It just means someone's illicit, illegal, nasty, satanic behavior doesn't change how I am. I am made in the likeness of Christ. So how do we honor people? Well, you prioritize them. How do you honor people? You, you talk because honor has a language. You build them up with your words. And then if we want it to run in our family, we have to know that honor, well, we protect them. What do you mean protect them? I want to give you something very, very simple. Because culture will blur this line. Because culture believes that if we disagree, you're dishonoring. If we disagree, then you can't love me. If we disagree, then how can you say God loves everybody? You, I said it last week, you don't get to define my motives. Only my God and my heart does that. I can disagree with you and not dishonor you. I can stand my ground for what I believe in and based on the Bible and based who I am in Christ and completely disagree with you, but don't let co co culture say you dishonor them. But everybody in culture wants to put it together, and it's not. You prioritize them, you build them up because honor has a language, and then you protect them. There's this great story. Noah. you got to love Noah. If you don't love Noah, you will after this story. Trust me. Noah makes it. The flood. He makes it through. All those animals. You know the ark stunk. You know it was a long time. You know the family got on his nerves. That's it. He makes it. First thing Noah does is he plants a vineyard. That's how you know he's Italian. The first thing he does is he goes and plants a vineyard. He goes and plants a vineyard, and like any smart person, he plants a vineyard, and he enjoys the fruit. And he gets drunk as Cooter Brown. Listen to me. He's drunk. Noah's like, whoo this is awesome. Whoa, we made it. We made it. <laughs> he gets so drunk, he's naked. He gets so drunk, he's naked. He goes back to his tent, naked as a jaybird. Listen, can we just be clear? Because it's Saturday night. When you start the night, clothed, and then you start drinking, and you wake up naked, you drunk. <laughs> he wakes up, he's in his tent, he's naked. All of a sudden, his son, Ham, comes in, da, ah, ah, da, I can't unsee that. He comes into the tent, oh, and he runs out and he makes fun of his father to his other brothers. Hey, Jaypeth, Shem, come here. You're not going to believe this. Come here. The Bible says this. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw that his father was naked and went outside and told his brothers. Shem and Japheth took a robe, held it over their shoulders, and backed into the tent to cover their father. As they did this, they looked the other way so they would not see him naked. Oh, Ham comes in and goes, ah, oh, it's... But, but Shem and Japheth take a cloth and they walk in backwards because I, I don't want anybody to know about it and I don't want to see it. <laughs> because that's not the way a son should see his father.
So they take this cloth and they back up. And they, and they lay it. And they couldn't lay it and went, did it cover him? <laughs> right, no, no. They laid it on him. And then they walked out. And I want to encourage you about something. I want you to read that story, Genesis 9. When Noah came uh, <laughs> conscious, he found out what Ham did. He found out what Shem and Japheth did. And the only two sons he blessed were Shem and Japheth. In a culture, they read that story today, they go, ah, oh, they covered up his sin. They didn't let, no, they didn't cover up his sin. What they did is they dignified his weakness. See, they didn't cover up the sin because when you read the story, what culture will say is, yeah, but what about he shouldn't have been drunk? He shouldn't have been naked. Why was he naked? What did he do? What did he do? I don't care. He didn't earn it. Well, honor is not based on earning. Honor is given. They didn't cover up his sin. They didn't say what you did. What you did was, oh, it's okay, it's my dad. No, what they did is they dignified a weakness. It's because when you honor something, you protect it. You don't hide what someone's faults may be from others, make believe they're not there. But according to scripture, when you honor, there's a blessing. That's why the fifth commandment has a promise to it. So that you may long, live long and be prosperous. So that it will go well with you when you honor your mother and father. When I put together this message, it could come off like I want you to learn Something because I want you to, it's about people. I want you to honor people. This, when it runs in my family, honor is not about others. It's having the blessing in you and your family's life of knowing what true honor is. That's my heart as your pastor. It's so that you would reap the blessing of honor when you honor. And really understand what honor means. Here's the prayer for me, for you. He who speaks on his own does so to gain honor for himself. But he who works for the honor of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. It runs in my family. It, this week, is honor. Honor runs in my family. We honor people because it's one of the ways that we honor God. We honor people because it begins with his view of them, not my view of them. And to honor someone or a situation, I prioritize it. I speak well about it or about them. And I protect it. When my kids did something wrong, and trust me, they did stuff wrong because they get that from the mother's side of the family. <laughs> I didn't call other family members. Let me tell you what your grandson did. I didn't call friends. Let me tell you what an idiot my daughter. The honor builds up. I didn't hide what went wrong. I just gave dignity to a weakness because it's Bible. Amen? Amen? I love you. Let me bow your heads. Thank you, Lord, so much that we get to hear your voice through your word. This week, Lord, provide for us everywhere we turn opportunities to show honor in situations and to people because you love them because you died for them, because they're made in your image. Give us the strength, Lord, to see people the way you see them and love people the way you love us. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Come on, let's stand together. Listen, as you leave, the prayer team is up front to pray for anything at all that you need in your life. Enjoy the beautiful weekend. I love you. See you next week.